some prayer, you guys. Would you join with me? Bible says, if two shall agree on earth as anything, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. And we know that our covenant with God is so powerful that if we just line up with the word of God, whatever we shall ask, it shall be done. Go ahead. You can walk in front of the camera. We haven't officially kind of... <laughs> Amen. All right, sir. Okay, you guys. So we just bless you, Father, and we ask you to open our eyes of our understanding, help us to receive and to um, retain the word that we've learned tonight. Tonight's a very, very, very important subject, okay? And I hope to explain it to you right along with all of the, um, the scriptures that are involved, but I want to be simple and stick with the notes. But if I can, I also want to talk to you a little bit about the conscious and subconscious mind as well. All right, so let's go ahead and read our paragraph to you. Have you ever noticed that when you got born again, that certain things sort of follow you into this new and exciting life? Maybe certain old things. Maybe some of the old ways, maybe the old thinking, or even a habit or two. Yet you know, you have been born again. You're saved. It is because we need to renew our mind. Everyone say, renew your mind. Okay, we see, as we renew my, and I'll explain this a little bit later. So we, we need to renew our minds to the word of God and replenish our thoughts with what God desires for us uh, to know. Your mind is like a computer, garbage in, garbage out. So we need to feed on the word and learn to discern our thoughts, what is of God, what is not of God, and line them up with the nature of Jesus and the positive attributes of God as long as with his word too. Some years ago, I set up a life check. Everyone say life check. To give you a checkup from the neck up. We asked some basic questions like, how is your prayer life? Are you in the word daily? So let us get into the word and find out what God said about it. Now, I have a life check. I'm going to go through it so we have it on camera for those who are watching uh, by YouTube coming into the garage. And basically, I'm going to give you a copy of this. If you want to do this, we're going to give them out Sunday too. But I'm going to read it to you. But these, these are designed to put right into the leaflet of the front of your Bible or the back of your Bible so that you can follow the life check. Now, remember, we've been talking a little bit about at the end of the week, going over God's week, say, Lord, how we doing? You know, I know you're doing good, God, but how did I do? Let's get some, you know, things going. And so if, you, if you're a serious Christian, you need to be asking some questions about your walk. And this is between you and God, not between us. But let me read what they are. Okay, and so, so daily life check. You can pick this up uh, anytime. We have it on the computer. Okay, and uh, keep it in your Bible. Ask yourself these questions. Number one, am I in the Word daily? Do I get in the Word just a little bit daily? Number two, do I put God first place in the choices that I make? Good, good thing, right? Number three, is prayer a daily and consistent habit? Now, these are questions to ask you. This is not me asking you to make you feel bad. Uh, number four, do I speak to people in love and respect? Good things, huh? Number five, am I a faithful and a, am I faithful and a good giver? Six, is my home life in order? Amen? Make sure you watch your home discussions. See, for example, if we're on a board, you're on a board like that, don't discuss church business, church matters outside of the people involved. Even with you and your wife, always let your criticism be positive and offer solutions. We'll get to that in a minute. But don't sit and criticize your pastor. You know, when somebody asked the question, hey, what'd you have for lunch? I had the pastor. <laughs> I think it was Joe. First time I met him, you know. <coughs> you know, it's a joke. But some people do. They have no problem criticizing churches and others. Just don't get into that because it hinders your walk. So make sure your home discussions. Number seven, do I come across to others lovingly or as a dictator being like a gong show? 
crash bang. Number eight, do I work with others well or do I control everything? Num number nine, do I gossip or tailbear? Am I watching or listening to what comes out of my mouth? Number 10, am I producing fruit with God in others or in drying, am I drying up? Am I producing fruit or, or am I just drying up? Number 11, do I criticize too much? Do I think a, a bit too highly of myself? Or do I pray instead and help seek you know, solutions. And number 12, are my uh, lips full of praise and thanksgiving? Am I giving glory to God for all the blessings I have? Or am I complaining about what's not working for me? And then number 13, am I doing my part by encouraging others? Great checklist. And if you got, haven't got those, you can write us. We'll send them to you. Um, you know, email me, text me. We'll shoot them out to you. And then we'll make sure that you get a copy of this tonight if you want, guys. All right, so that's a checkup from the neck up. Can you say amen? Some nice, nice important questions. All right, go with me to Romans chapter 12 for tonight. We're going to look at two verses, verse 1 and verse 2, and then we're going to read it also in the Amplified, okay? So Romans chapter 12, okay, in your notes, verses 1 and 2, oh, let me read it to you. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, thank God he's merciful, right? That you present, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, notice it says you present your bodies. Who's the you? Present your bodies. So there's two entities. There's you and your body. There's you. What you? What's the top? Which one is it? Your spirit, very good, Denise. You, your spirit, is supposed to bring the first thing in the morning, your body before the Lord, and say, all right, God, excuse my, my, my pun, kill it, will you? Shut it down, kill it. Why? Because our flesh is what really, we wrestle with our flesh. And when the enemy tries to tempt us, he needs uh, our flesh. He needs us to be paying attention to him. So you and I meet with God and God begins to salt down and begins to shut down our flesh while our spirits amplify and while our soul soaks up his presence. Can you say amen? That's why Romans 12 says, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, there means set apart, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service or what's required of you to walk in victory. Okay, watch this. We're going to read it in the Amplified in a minute. And do not be conformed or pressed into this world, but be a transformed by the new renewing of your mind. How do we transform? Denise, by the renewing of your mind. The word transform there is the same word over where Jesus was transformed before Peter, James, and John. Remember, he's transfigured before. Same word. It's the word we get when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly or when a caterpillar moth changes into a moth. It's called metamorphosizing. That you transform or metamorphosize. You change from what's on the inside of you, comes out to the outside, instead of being some kind of wormy dude or wor we won't say wormy woman, I did, sorry, and into something very beautiful, like a butterfly flitting about, being led of God, can you say amen? How many's ever felt like a worm sometimes? Don't raise your hands. When you were walking in the flesh, right? Yeah. But how many here know when we expose ourselves to God? And as often as you do it, I recommend every day just for a short time, expose yourself to God so he can bring out the best in you. Bring out the best in you. Amen? All right, so it says, and be transformed. So you're going to change only. You're going to only change, Marvin, Linda, hey, and Terry, everybody. You're only going to change when we do what? When we renew our mind. So we're like a computer. 
Everyone say subconscious, subconscious. and conscious mind. Say subconscious, subconscious. And, sub and, and conscious mind. Okay, so a conscious mind is what you are aware of right now. You're conscious of it. Subconscious mind, I'm just going to keep it simple, okay? It's a lot more complex than that, but the Bible is simple. And the subconscious mind is your memories. Your memories. And when you put your memories back into your subconscious mind, and let's say you're going through your life, and suddenly a memory comes popping out, and you get a deja vu. Well, it's like I, I, I remember this or I've been through this before. No, it's down into your subconscious mind and something triggered it and came forward. Now, this is what Satan uses. Our mind has garbage in our subconscious deposit and it has good stuff in our subconscious. That's why I said, hold on to your good memories, build good memories from then, from this time on. But your bad memories, wash them out with the word. Wash them out of there. Let go of your bad memories. Let go, if there's somebody that you're still mad at, forgive them. Because if you don't forgive, it's questionable whether you'll make it to heaven or not. And I don't want to be there for you and see you not make it because you're, you're too above forgiving everybody. Jesus forgave us our great debt. Anyway, so your subconscious mind, there's still some garbage in there. Everybody say, but thank God I can't smell it. No, you still got bad thoughts, things that are bad memories that are still in there. Some people suppress it so far down in there, it takes a miracle of God to get it out. Hello? Paul said it this way. I count all that I have as dung. It's all not worth nothing. Why? Because some of the memories, I'm sure it was good. It, it, historians say that Paul was married at one time. He must have been in love. So he had all, some of those memories suppressed. But he realized in order for us to change into Christ-like material, Christ-like material, we've got to get our mind in the Word. Now, think about it. I'll explain it to you. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God came into your spirit, didn't he? Now, let me ask you just a simple question. Can you teach God anything? So, we have in our spirit God, right? So, we have the mind of Christ already in our spirit. God's in there, right? So, we can't teach our spirit anything. I love these people. I said, I'm just feeding my spirit. No, what you're doing is massaging it so that God grows up in it. Can you say amen? amen? And that you're not suppressing it through an unrenewed mind or your flesh. So what happens is, then we go into the word of God and the word begins to wash over our mind and begins to hit little key points where the subconscious mind can bring out some of the negative and God can wash it out and replace it with a memory or with the word. And the good memories, he could sustain and polish them up. I got a lot of great memories, but there's some bad stuff to go along with them. So we wash out the bad and keep the good. Can you say amen? So the mind has a subconscious storage chamber and it has a conscious mind. So consciously, how many's ever bought a car and then you didn't notice how many of those cars were on the road until you got your car and suddenly it was everywhere. See, that's conscious, your peripheral conscious mind. You're aware of that. Now, people that are programmed negatively, they're aware of negative things way before they catch positive things. That's why we're to renew our mind because some people, they'll come right in, they'll find everything that's wrong with everything. I used to be one of those, you know. I, I tell you what, all the chairs are perfect except for the one. You know what I mean? So there are people just like that. And there's nothing wrong with it. Just we've got to understand that subconsciously. So how many here would actually admit that you have some things to still wash out of your mind? Amen. Come on. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So we need to be in the Word, right? Yeah. So we got Romans 12. Now listen to it in the Amplified Bible. Mm -hmm. This is Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the Amplified, okay? Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive uh, dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, and consecrated, well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable and rational and intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted after its external superficial customs, but be it transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude as a new creature so that you may prove to yourself what is the good and what is acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Boy, I tell you what, God's approval right there, huh? A couple of points, one, two, and three there. If you will notice, our growth is a progression. You ever notice that? How many know you don't grow up overnight? So if you'll notice that, our growth is a progression. Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Remember we read it in Romans 12. That you, renewed your, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Remember we talked about this real quickly. Young Christians, they get probably 30% right and 60% not so right. Then later as we develop, we get probably 60% right and 40% not so right. Then as we go and we learn to be led by the Spirit and the Holy Spirit takes over our life, we could possibly get a hundredfold. Can you say amen? And see, remember, we're focusing on Jesus not to impress others. Folks, I'm not here to impress you. I know I'm very impressive. My wife says I'm very good looking. I know I got floppy ears, you know. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? We need to be confident in who God is on the inside of us. But we need to renew our mind. Why? Remember, the mind is like a coupler, like your elbow joint. If this part of the arm is coupled by the elbow joint to the upper part of the arm. Now, what happens if you break your elbow? Even moving your fingers is difficult, right? When your elbow gets out of joint, even the upper part of your arm hurts, right? They have to pop it back into joint, probably put a cast on it. I don't know if they do or not. You know, you follow what I'm saying? So remember, the joint to your outer body and to your inner spirit is your mind. So where does Satan attack the most? He attacks your mind. So let, let's say Carrie's sitting at home. He's not feeling too good. I stayed up way too late and I ate too much way at night. And I get up and I'm sitting there and I'm not feeling good. My mind is going, well, you know, I guess I'm going to stay home and I'm not going to be enthusiastic. What should we be thinking about? Our body, or should we be consulting the word to give us to get us built up? Well, we naturally, you know, we consult our bodies and we take medicines, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not trying to put that down, but also we need to consult the scripture. We need to find out what the scripture says so we can rise above the feeling of what we're feeling. Can you say amen? amen. How many's ever felt like you weren't liked? But then when you talk to that person, you, you found out that that was just your feeling. You see, so it's very, very important for us to renew our minds. Amen? Like a computer, how many know you need an upgrade once in a while? Yeah. Upgrade. <laughs> Amen. All right, second is renewing our mind takes devotion, folks. It takes a real devotion and a combination of things. God says, look, to Joshua, remember? In the book of Joshua, he says, look, Joshua, Moses is dead. 
So here's what I want you to do. I'm paraphrasing. Don't let the book of the law depart from your eyes or out of your, your midst of your heart. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Don't let it depart out of your eyes and your mouth. Why? Keep it in the midst of your heart. For then, and then, the Amplified says, only then you'll find your way prosperous and you'll have good success. It is also an encouragement for us that we start renewing our mind and replace the negative destruction thoughts with God thoughts. Can you say amen? Biblical promises instead. The Bible says you're blessed coming in, you're blessed going out. Your body says you ache. You're getting old, you're ugly. But you're blessed coming in, you're blessed going out. Now you have to make a choice which one you're going to dwell on. Come on. Now people who, who fall privy to temptation, maybe pornography or what, you know, just any kind of temptation, dwell on it while. The, the suggestion will come and they'll dwell on it and dwell on it. Just like what I did, said many times, I'll do it again. We dwell on a nice ice cream, you know, peanut puster parfait or maybe a, a sundae or something. And we sat there and we dwell on it long enough and we dwell on it and talk about it long enough. How many's ever heard somebody talk about food and suddenly almost like you're hungry again? So you need to understand a little bit about your mind. You get to dwelling on the negative, you're going to feel negative. You're going to feel very self-centered. You get to dwelling on the Word of God, it's going to talk to you about life. It's going to talk to you about promise. It's going to talk to you about all kinds of great things that you want it to talk to you about. So it's up to you to consult whatever. Your feelings, consult your, your, your unrenewed mind, or get in and reprogram your, your computer. Why? Because if you reprogram it, it's going to transform you into Christ, like material. Yeah. Woohoo! Glory to God. And thirdly, we must learn to meditate on the word daily and mix it with the praise and worship of our lips. How many here don't know what the word meditation means? Come on, put your hand, you know, come on, let me know. What does the word meditate mean? How many's ever worried? Worried about something. Come on, you know, nod at me. You don't have to raise your hand. If you worried, then you meditated. Because worry is simply meditating on what the devil says. Sure. You, 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 you know, situation says, how are you going to do this? And you can either believe God and pray about it, or you can start worrying about it. How many know? We've all done it. Well, so our job is to make the right choices by renewing our mind. Can you say amen? So we need to meditate on the Word of God to replace the old programs daily and mix it with praise and worship. Lord, I thank you. I go out with joy and I break forth with praise. Thank you, Jesus. The mountains and the hills uh, break forth before them. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the anyway, so the idea is what are we spending our time doing? Can you, by worrying, get a pay increase? No, no. Okay. All right. Your spirit and your soul are two different parts of your body, of your being, all right? Colossians 2, 7 through 10. Follow along with me if you got your Bible. Beware lest any cheat, anyone cheat you through philosophy, is philosophy from your spirit or is it from your, your head? Your head. Your head. Don't add, here's another thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you, okay? Listen, there are plenty of traditions. For example, like the Indians, uh, the American Indians that lived here way before the white man showed up, okay? They have their traditions, okay? Do they not? Good traditions and they have some bad traditions. What would be a bad tradition? Based on something evil or something bad, right? Worship of devils, cutting and letting of blood, all kinds of things, okay? Some of the practices of the Indians, even up in our neighborhood, was that if they are harassed by evil spirits, they put 
pine cones and stuff in the windows to scare the spooks away. Now, is that a good tradition or is that a poor tradition? Poor. How many know that sticks and stones don't scare demons? So I'm, I'm talking to you now. So a lot of nations, a lot of peoples, okay, will take their traditions. Now listen to me. They'll take their traditions and they'll bring it into their Christianity. Okay? You can't do that. You can't worship Buddha and Jesus at the same time. And so people who change from one religion and they, they come to America and they become a Christian, if they're not truly born again, they'll try to take some of their traditions in with their, their Christianity. Folks, do you know what Jesus said about that? He says, your traditions make the power of God non-effective. And so we went out up in here in this Indian reservation and we got some girl delivered. She, my wife was with us, another couple. She, we got the spooks out of her and she came to her normal, normal mind. But I noticed all of these weird things, a talisman and all this stuff they had in the house. And I said, what is all that? Oh, that's our traditions. I said, well, you need to throw those traditions away because they attract demons. So what you do, if you come from a different nation, because we have some, and if you come from a different, I come from Scottish background, and drinking was a real big problem with Scots. Fighting and drinking and punching and brawling. And you don't think a little bit of that followed our family? So family traditions, if they're drinking and brawling, is not going to be very good for following Jesus. So basically we have to renew our mind. We have to wash those things out. What did Jesus say to his disciples? When Jesus was getting ready to be betrayed and go to the garden, he prayed. But it says, he, he turned to his disciples and says, now you are clean through the words that I've spoken to you. Hello. John 15. Now, let's go on. Beware, lest anyone cheat you. Folks, are there cheats out there? Are there charlatans out there? You betcha. Constantly. In fact, in the Northwest, I think we got our fair share of them. Hello. Okay. And look what it says. Beware. Okay. According to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Verse 9. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In who? In who? In Jesus Christ. Okay, so therefore, when we have a relationship with him and accept him in our heart, who else comes along with the ride? The Father and the Holy Spirit. In him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. All right, so let's go on. And you are complete in him. Yes. See, you're not, Jesus didn't leave a few holes in your armor. He didn't leave you out there for the wolves to get you. The Bible says you're complete in him. What does that mean? What's the word complete mean? Whole. You are whole in him. You're made whole. Well, I don't feel whole. Feelings are a part of the soul. You have to renew your mind. Okay, feelings are part of the body, and they're deceptive. How many know that we're not to walk by our feelings, but our feelings are to follow our faith? We walk by faith, not by our feelings. So feelings follow our faith, and never our faith follow our feelings. If that was so, most people wouldn't go to church because Satan would make them feel bad in the first thing in the morning. If you're the kind of person that's always talking about how you feel, get over it. You're talking too much about it. Well, I don't feel good. Well, true. But go to God until you do. And if it's first day is not good enough, go to second day. And go back the third day. And go back the fourth day till you drive it out of your body. Yes. But don't sit there and play kowtow. Oh, renew your mind. Amen. Okay? Some people, they're freaks. They'll get a little cough and they'll run to the medicine cabinet. They'll never pray. 
And we don't want you to act that way. We want you to depend on God. God wants you to depend on him. Amen. He wants to rescue you. He wants to hold you. He wants to, you know, help you in every direction that there is. But as long as we take matters in our own hands, God rests and we work. When we rest, God works. For it is God who works in me to do his good will and pleasure. Can you say amen? Let's go on. So a couple of points underneath that scripture says, you're a born again, right? Your spirit man is complete, but it's in seed form. Two, your soul is not complete. Anybody can tell me at least five attributes of the soul? First one is we're studying it tonight, your mind. Then your will. Okay, good, good, good. Then your personality. Amen. Then your drives are what you like, your appetites. Some people like drawing and some people like speaking. <coughs> Excuse me. Some people like playing, you know. Some people like building. Those are your drives. So it's mind, will, emotions, appetite, intellect. Yes. Okay? How many know that some people think a little more highly than they ought to? You know, you listen to somebody who thinks too highly of themselves, they say the same stories over and over again because they're not busy out working with God and getting some new ones, moving right along. Thirdly, here is what our soul is compromised, or excuse me, here is what our soul is comprised of, mind, will, emotions, appetites, and personality. Say, I got it. It's in three. Four, we are a living soul. Before we were born again, we were exposed and taught from the outside in. Sixthly, now we must walk from the inside out, renewing our mind, uh, and it will help us get into agreement with God. God lives in our spirit, doesn't he? Yes. But it's no good if, if you're arguing with God with your head all the time. Amen. How many has ever intended with your heart to do something your head talked you out of it? Oh, yeah. So the importance of renewing your mind is to get the lather and the, and the anointing of the word to massage your thinking mm -hmm. so you can relax and recess and let what's in your spirit come flowing through your mind instead of blocking it. Remember, God flows out as well as flows in. So your mind has a door that swings open and lets God out or stays locked or swings in and lets God in or stays locked. We're to resist the devil and open to God or draw nigh to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee, right? So all these scriptures all match. Isn't this good? So I hope you're getting some of this. Now, in Ephesians 4, I turn my page here. I didn't go through all the points today. Okay, uh, number five. Now we must walk from the inside out. Renewing our mind really helps us get into agreement with God. And then Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. Actually, it's I think it's just, uh, yeah, 23, just part of it. 23B, they would say it. Ephesians 3, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. And be renewed in the what? How many here know your mind is, doesn't have a spirit? Huh? You're a spirit, you have a soul, your mind, and you live in a body or an earth suit. So what is the spirit of the mind? Huh? It's a, there we go. Boy, it's right there in there. It's a combination of your spirit and your soul working together. How many know you got the goods in your spirit? Yes. But your soul acts like a lens. Okay, the lens could be clouded with flesh. It could have all kinds of mud splashed on it because you will let bitterness or you're resentful or, or you're angry or unforgiving somehow splashes up on the soul and then only the God on the inside, you can't shine through on the outside of you. Why? Because you're all bound up in your soul. 
How do you get that free? Asking God to cleanse you and then getting in the Word to wash your mind. Can you say amen? What happens when you don't take a shower after a week? Your wife kicks you out of the house. <laughs> we just keep it funny. Well, folks, you got to shower with Jesus every morning. Look up at me. Everybody look up at me. I need to say this with me. I need to meet with God so he gives me the shower of my soul so that God can flow out of my life unhindered. See, that's what, you see, learning to let God flow out of you. I've even done uh, uh, workshops where we get people's mind all, you know, jarbled up and let them try to receive from God. They can't receive a thing. But once I get their mind thinking on something, you saw it too when he said, hey, what'd you have for breakfast? As soon as the mind got out of the way, the Spirit of God moved. Mm -hmm. Hello. And so we need to get in the Word to keep the mind in unison with God and His Word. Why? Because whether we know it or not, we have the brakes with the skids. There's all kinds of hindrances that our soul can't because there's something that we have that God will not bypass. Can you remember what that is? In our soul, there's something that we have in our soul, a portion of our soul that God cannot trespass or bypass. It's your will. Very good, Denise. Tonight, you're getting all the answers. Amen. God cannot trespass your will. You have to be willing. So the stubborn, God resists. The unwilling, God resists because it's pride. Only a fool will say there's no God. We know every human being knows there's a God. It's just they don't want to admit it. All right, let's move on. Next little point we need to get to is point two. Okay, okay. The spirit of your mind is a combination of your soul and spirit. Uh, point two. It is what emanates out of you as a believer. Have you ever noticed that some people attract some pretty bad stuff all the time, and then some people seem to attract the blessings? What's the difference? It's the spirit of your mind. Your spirit is attracting either good or bad, depending on the load of your mind and the release of your spirit. You could be asleep at night and get blessings because your spirit of your mind, the unity of your soul and spirit is in harmony. Some people get so troubled during the day, they need to pull out their little Bible, their little dagger, and consult it so they keep their mind locked in with the will of God so God's blessing continue to flow. Because the moment Satan can get your mind distracted, the, the quicker God stops operating in your life. Well, God's more powerful than that. You've got a human will. And if you're distracted on other things, you're going to miss stuff. That's why it's so important when you come to church, be rested. Be prayed up because you're liable to nod off in a very important time. Who do you think's behind that, really? Your flesh and the enemy. You slept through the most important thing. Sometimes the people, that they, they, they kind of get distracted and stuff like that. I try to encourage you to go back and, and look over the, what you missed, might have missed. And you'll find usually at those times you're, the baby cries or something joggles up. It's usually it's something you need to hear. And if en the enemy's that crafty, we need to pay attention. Come on, smile up at me and say, pay attention. All right, I love you too. All right. All right. So thirdly, Okay, fourthly, excuse me, the mind renewal is what causes us to transform into who God really designed for you and I to be. All right, focus and meditation on the word mixed with soaking in his presence. Second Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. Okay. It says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age is blinded. Folks, the people in the world, there's a deceptive spirit that's blinded their mind. The Israelites, when Moses is read, 
The Israelites, because they weren't born again, they got the blindness too. Peter, when Jesus was being transfigured, opened his mouth and spoke his blindness. It's good that we be here. Let us make three tabernacles. Folks, Christians become religious when they don't stay fresh with God. And when you become religious, you become part of the upper crust. The only thing that holds you together is your dough. <laughs> and it might be Play-Doh. <laughs> Nobody got it. Anyway, let's go right on. <clears throat> now look at, all right. Lest the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. Now, verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Christ's sake. For if it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, and the light shines into darkness, and the darkness cannot overwhelm it. And he commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So when you and I open our eyes and we look at the face of Jesus, our spirit starts to begin to flow out of us, but our mind better be in a place where we know how to yield. Because a proud mind will resist God and not even know it. All right, a couple of points underneath that. Always approach God and God's word, word with a hunger and a desire for truth. Never act like you know it all. Two, learn to meditate on the truths in the Holy Spirit will begin to paint the pictures. One time I was meditating about the, the pool of Bethesda, you know, where the guy was, would, would come. And he would lay there all day long waiting for the angel to stir up the waters, remember? And Jesus came and he said, do you want to be whole? What did the guy say? He says, I have no man to put me in a pool. In other words, I can't, Jesus. I'm too crippled and everybody else is too rude and they're stepping down into the pool before me. That's what the Greek says. I know I paraphrased it a little bit. So what did Jesus do? Oh, poor thing. I'm going to heal you now. No, he just says, take up your bed and go home. And that's just how what happens to us. If we don't renew our mind, we'll get up these jumbled up answers and excuses. Where art thou, Adam? Have you eaten of the fruit that I told you not to eat of? The one Satan manipulated and changed into something that would open your mind, kind of like a psychedelic drug fruit. And you will know good and evil. Have you eaten that? What did he say? It was the woman you gave me, God. You see where his mind was? His mind was no longer asking God to forgive him and to help him. His mind was into self-justification and making excuses. Would you say he's now suffering with an unrenewed mind, bound by fear? Sure, Adam was. And we can be too if we don't renew our, our mind on a daily basis. I've had people say, I know all about that mind renewal stuff. And then you listen to them and half the time they're cussing and spewing and speaking stuff they shouldn't in church and they go and you look at them and they just a week before they, they were bragging about how their minds renewed well listen if your mind's renewed you're going to look and smell just like Jesus and so if you haven't got that way yet let's keep renewing our mind can you say man let's just keep renewing our mind all right let's go on second Corinthians 3 14 through 18 says this in your notes Verse 14 says, but their minds were blinded, talking about the Israelites. For until this day, the day when Jesus rose from the dead, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Listen carefully, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. 
Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, say in me. In me. Say where the Spirit of the Lord is, where? In me. In me. All right? There is liberty, so you're free. Amen. But we all with an unveiled face as beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being changed or transformed into the same image from glory to glory just by the Spirit of the Lord. So if you're focusing on Jesus, you'll be changed. If you focus on Jesus in the Word, you'll be changed. But if you're focusing on a problem, you'll become problem conscious. If you're focusing on other people's faults, you become fault finder. You'll become a moat hunter. Why? Because that's what our brain does. So we put it in the Word. Can you say amen? We baptize our brain in the Word. We renew our mind in the Word. Amen? Amen. All right, so a couple of points. The God of this world, that's Satan, wants us to be ignorant and unaware. He wants us to trust in ourselves and not depend on God. He wants us to trust not only in ourselves, but hopefully we'll turn from God and turn to him because after all, he lives on the earth. This is his planet, he thinks. So he acts like that. Oh, Denise, you'd be much happier if you do what I tell you, you know. I rebuke that because I don't like to speak and be happy I am. All right, a couple of things. Colossians 3, 8 through 11. You have to have enough word to know what his image is. How many here know that the guy in Jesus' parable that he gave the one talent to, remember he gave two talents to, and he gave five talents. We know the one with the five, the one with the two, retraded and did other things with it. But the one with one, we know that the guy with the one had a bad concept and understanding of who God is. Did you know today, many Christians today have a bad understanding of who God is? They think if they do something wrong, God is punishing them. They think if they get sick, God is punishing them. Hello? No. God doesn't use the devil's tools to kill his kids. If, everybody look. Look at me. Who lives in you? Yeah. So if God beats on himself, isn't he a masochist? Yes. Isn't he a retard? Yes, he is. Because he doesn't do that. But see, that's what Satan and religion teaches us. You've been bad, and so now God is punishing you. <laughs> that is a lie from the pit. But see, if somebody believes that, immediately something goes wrong in their life, and they have to search, what did I do wrong? It sounds like Job, doesn't it? Yes. He was wrong, too. Because after it all, if you read the book of Job, he put his hand on his mouth and he says, I've uttered foolishness before God. Hello? So how many Christians possibly could there be who have a wrong concept or understanding of who God really is? And how important it is for you and I to get a good concept through the word of God. Remember what Jesus said to Philip, he that had seen me, seen the Father. Remember the Israelites, they had a bad concept of Jesus. What do you mean? In fact, I want to tell you, the one with the five, the one with the two, and the one with the one, the one with the one represents people with a bad concept of who the Messiah was. So out of fear, they hid we have another parable of it where Jesus says when you have a light, a light's supposed to be on a lampstand, not under a bushel, not under a basket, right? So everybody goes, well, what's the bushel? What's the basket? That's being hidden in you. Nobody knows you're a Christian because you never tell anybody. Well, they're going to find out I'm a Christian by the way I act. Is that why? That you're screaming and yelling and acting like the world? How are they going to tell the difference? You're supposed to be different. 
And if you're not different enough, go to be with God and ask him to help you change. And one of the things that's going to tell you is you need to renew your mind the way I want you to understand. Because Satan's a master at lying. He's a master at twisting the gospel. Had God really said... He knows that the moment that you take of his fruit, you're going to be just like him. And what did he do? He appealed to their jealousy of God. What was Satan? Why did he rebel against God? He was jealous of God. He was taking all of these rich jewels and gold and everything in this planet, and he was making his own stuff with it, and then finally declared war. I'm going to just say this for those that are watching. You know, back in the day when all the dinosaurs were destroyed, you know, what do they say, 76 million years ago? It wasn't, it wasn't a meteor that hit the planet. And so if you want to know what the answer is, come Sunday, because we're going to do an after-reflection on... The, the dateless past before the creation of man. So we'll have a good time on that. But that's just a little, um, what do you call it? Shameless plug. Okay, so let's move on. All right. You have had enough word. Do you have enough word in you to know his image? Okay, so it goes on. <coughs> it says, do not lie one another and that you have put off your old man and its doings, its deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed. See, you're to renew yourself in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. There, where are we going to find that, folks? In the word, right? Where, therefore, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is in all and in all. All right? So you think about it. What is one of the things? Remember, Satan is like a vampire. Those of you watching, but you might get this. Satan feeds on our anger. He feeds on our hate. He feeds on our wars. He's the instigator of arguments. He feeds our flesh so that we get into positions. Isn't it silly when you see two Christians arguing over something silly? And it, you ever feel the tenseness that starts around people that argue? There's an evil tenseness in the air. What do you think that is? That's the enemy feeding off of the strife and the argument. Therefore, the biggest thing you need to do is be quiet and don't argue. And be in love. God, say, God, just saturate me in love right now. Because the one thing Satan cannot fight, Joe, is he can't fight the love of God coming out of us. He can't fight the love of God coming out of us. Now we made of faith, what is it? Faith, hope, and charity or love, right? But the greatest of these is, love. why? Because God is love. And he lives in you now. So when the enemy's feeding off you because you're upset, you're angry and stop, stop, just stop and say, I need to go pray. Go in the bathroom, flush the toilet, sit down or whatever and start praying. Amen. Why? So God saturates you in love. Why? Because then immediately you cut the devil's power. Yes. Instead of feeding it. You ever gotten so frustrated you end up saying something you didn't mean? And of course, I don't want you to raise your hands. And yet it kept pushing it. Some wives will push that button on their husband so much that the husband will stop being a Christian and do something stupid. And some husbands will push the button on the wives so much. Stop it. How do we stop it, Pastor Kerry? Renew your mind and get soaked in love. Because the moment you renew your mind and soak in love and say, nope, I'm not going to allow this to happen to me, and you begin to worship instead, the love of God begins to emulate and Satan's power is cut. We overcome evil with good. And good comes forth out of love. Very good. All right. So, do you know enough about the Word of God to know what God really looks like? And if you don't, where do we go to find a good picture of what God really looks like? Jesus. Amen. And the new Christians, we tell them to read the book of John so they can get to know Jesus. Amen. 
See, some of us have glasses, right? I have reading glasses and stuff. You put the glasses on to help you what? See, See right? Jesus is your glasses. Yes. Jesus is your glasses. You put Jesus on so you can see the world the way God wants you to see it. You put Jesus' glasses on so you can see your partner, maybe your spouse or, or your child, or, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can see them in the way Jesus sees them. When you hear all this nasty news and you start to worry and fret, you put on the Jesus jacket, eyeglasses, and you begin to, and you put on Jesus' words. Why? You cut the devil's power. Amen. Satan cannot defeat somebody that walks with Jesus. Well, you're sure whacking me really good. Well, if you analyze yourself, you'll find out you're not walking with Jesus. You're dating him. You're showing up when things get tough. No, you got to meet with him. You got to love him. The, the, the Greek word for fellowshipping with God is, is the same Greek word we mean to be intimate with somebody you love. Not sexually, but intimate, exchanging your heart. That's what God wants you to do. Why? So you know his heart in every situation. That's why you hear prayers like this. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be granted to you. Well, how can that happen? Because you're in love with Jesus. You and God are, are buddies. I hate to use that expression. Very, you and God are like one. Chill, you know, you're just hooked. So you begin to think like him. You begin to act like him. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my, I need a lot of work. We all do. Yes. That's the fun, letting God operate on you. All right, and let's finish up. All right. Okay, so... Allow the word to paint the right image in your mind of who you are in Christ, too. Thirdly, having the wrong image of Christ or who you are in Christ will stunt your growth and your development. <clears throat> Some people, you know, they only think, ch you know, folks, people got a wrong concept of church. Church is a must, according to God. It's a must. You have to go to church to get the, the mixture of fellowship. You're not going to get that at the mall. <laughs> You're not going to get that in your living room watching TV. Church is intermingling in its society, in its community, and its exchange. It's set up where there's an outer court, fellowship hall, inner court, sanctuary, and most private place, the altar. Amen. So let's go on and finish. All right, so it goes on now. Your spirit will bear witness to the truth, right? Okay, so it says in verse 8, Colossians 3, verse 8 through 11. Did I skip anything? Did I skip? Uh, okay, good. I didn't want to skip anything. Okay, sec Colossians 3, 8 through 11 says, But now you have, oh, excuse me, but now you yourselves are to put off these. Everybody say put off. I'm, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, how many has ever taken off your shirt and thrown it over into the dirty clothes hamper? Right? Or, or, you know, I know us guys, we throw it on the floor, but we take off our shirt, take off our, our clothing, and we toss it off, right? And then we exchange it with new clothing. Can you say amen? You're tossing off your old person, and you're putting on the new person. You're tossing away the old person, yes. and you're putting on the new person. You're tossing off the old person. Well, how often do we do that? Every day, sometimes during the day, several times. Why? Because your old person wants to crop up and tell people a thing or two. Hello? There might be a time for that, but not when you're in the flesh. All right, move it right along. All right. So then it says, and that you have put on the new man, which is renewed according to the word of God. Right? All right. So a couple of points underneath, underneath this, okay? All right. Point one, your spirit will bear witness to truth as you focus on the word. How many's ever read in the word and something jumped out at you from the word of God? 
that's called revelation knowledge. It's called an impacted word of knowledge to you, a word of wisdom coming to you, okay? Second of all, allow the, allow the word to paint the right image of who you are in Christ. Folks, remember I told you about the Pool of Bethesda? When I was reading it in the scripture, I said, Holy Spirit, you were there. You helped these men write it down. Could you show me the picture of what it looked like? And by the whole time the Holy Spirit showed me, I could smell what it smelled like. I could hear the waters in the pool. I could hear the people in the background talking and laughing and everything like that. I could hear that man say, I have nobody to put me in the pool. Can't you understand that, Jesus? You see? Yeah. Sometimes we want to hold on to our hours so much we'll argue about them. But see, if you let the Holy Spirit show you when you're reading the Word, it becomes a beautiful love affair. That's great. And then thirdly, having the wrong image of Christ or who you are in Christ will stunt your growth. In conclusion, pray and soak before reading the Word. I take about three or four minutes and I just begin to love on God. And I say, okay, Lord, open, open my eyes. And I begin to let the word talk, talk to me. Amen. This allows the Holy Spirit to pull. <coughs> Sorry. This allows the Holy Spirit to pull revelation out for, for you. Stay humble always and be proactive to do the word and not, not just to study it. Keep your focus on Jesus. Remember, he's the author and the finisher of your faith. Did you get something that out of that tonight? Amen. How important it is to renew.